Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm not, although the previous speaker, speaker is my mother, I'm not in the cyber or the computer science field at all. I'm actually a journalist I and a lecturer. I'm a freelance journalist at the SAPC and a lecturer at the Department of Journalism, Film and Television at the University of Johannesburg. So I collaborated with this research with someone who is an expert in the field, Prof. Tergay Chilik from Vich University, but unfortunately he's in China, so I'm presenting on my own today. So a lot of what I'm looking at today, we've already <coughs> covered, but um, just to summarize as an introduction, we know with this big Internet of Things that we're talking about, the ideology of the Internet means that this simple untruth can turn into a viral rumor that can spread and affect millions of people internationally. We've always used to have that with the yellow press and the sensational headlines, so I don't always agree with people saying fake news is a new thing, but what is true that it is that it can spread within seconds, within minutes, and a lot of times we have, especially in South Africa, audience members that still believe everything they read online. And even recently when a lot of South Africans have started questioning the reliability of the news that they consume, um, very um, few South Africans actually um, doubted the role of search engines in programming the public discourse. And um, I would like to use a a quote from William Byrd that says a lot of South Africans didn't really think about what an algorithm is and what it actually means when they used to hear the word algorithm. They thought about these things they struggled with during their high school days. Personally, coming from the humanities, I'm one of those. So um, a lot of us didn't really think about the potential of algorithms to really influence our beliefs about the world around us. So to come back, I think the case study that we chose to look at, oh, and I'm going the wrong direction, um, is one that happened quite recently, uh, last year in fact, where a Twitter user actually tweeted and said, if you actually go and Google the term squatter camps in South Africa, you see a lot of pictures of predominantly white squatter camps and not black squatter camps as you would expect. So the specific Twitter user at that stage said, Google, why did this happen and why? And a lot of people um, started following the debate, started retweeting, started answering, and the, all of them actually blamed Google. Some even going as far as to say that Google is trying to disrupt the land reform debate in South Africa, and other also blaming the um, community rights um, organization Afroforum for actually trying to influence the US and actually feeding them the information when they were on a recent visit to the United States to create awareness about farm mur murders. So as soon as people started um, tweeting about this, this big public debate erupted and a lot of other people were actually defending Google and its use of algorithms saying that it's um, not Google that is actually influencing the Google images, it's actually the algorithm. And they said the reason is because there was a recent article by SBC News Online about um, white squatter camps and it was gaining a lot of traction online and that was driving the image rate. And we also found that the organization Africa Check that actually fact checks a lot of news organizations were also published a story about this and um, that was actually driving the results. But still people that are considered public intellectuals in South Africa, for example, Viral Hafaji, who was at that point the editor at large of Huffington Post, said that it is a problem that search engines actually have a power to subtly manipulate <coughs> our worldview as a user. So I'm sure South Africans are quite aware of the land reform debate in South Africa, 
but a lot of people are debating about when did it actually really start to dominate the public agenda. Some people are of the opinion that it was when the EFF was actually created and that it was part of a manifesto. And other intellectuals, for example, Max de Prea says that he feels it was during the ANC, when uh, the last ANC conference, when President Cyril Ramaphosa was elected that it actually started to dominate the public sphere. So what my co-writer and I did is we actually went and we um, used different algorithms and I mean different search engines and every t uh, we actually um, searched the term squatter camps in South Africa on um, six different search engines um, Google, Bing and DuckDuckGo of the USA, um, Yani, that's a Turkish search engine, Yandex, which is a Russian one, and Baidu, which is a Chinese one. Um, it's important to note that every time we cleared our cache and our history, so every time we started with a blank slate, um, my co-writer is actually Turkish and he um, has a small um, understanding of Chinese so we did use um, the correct languages as well to go and reference every time after we used the English search engine to see if it correlates with that. This was our finding and you can see there we got every time we got the same images um, they were just the sequence of it that they would be displayed in my differ but every time it was the same images. Um, then if we look at the different things that correlate, all of these, so these six different search engines all had different programmers, they all have different backgrounds, different training, also they, um, the source code of these different search engines are not open source so they can't influence each other. Also um, because none of these companies actually um, use the same algorithms, we can't really say that it's the algorithms that display the same bias, but we can definitely say that it is actually the data that is biased and not the algorithms. And I just quickly want to go back to another quote. As a humanitarian, it's for me very important that we highlight that it's actually most of the time the captions within the images that display this bias. We, um, I draw on the work of Roland Barthes who wrote a lot about anchorage and he said basically you always have a, a caption or text that anchors the image and this text actually directs the reader through the signified of the image and um, in a sense it re remote controls him to an image. So my, our conclusion was that it's the data that is biased, not the algorithms. And I just want to um, end off with a bit of a more humorous note in that in 2016, there was a Microsoft AI bot called Ty, and he was actually put on the Twitter sphere because they wanted the Ty, the bot, to actually learn from Twitter user, users and learn behavior from them. And within a couple of hours, <laughs> Ty started um, tweeting sexist and racist messages, which just proves you that even in artificial intelligence, bad company is a bad influence on, on, uh, on if you keep bad company, you um, will create bad behavior. And oh, just lastly to point out um, what is very interesting as well, if you look at the Twitter debate, and if you look at the main news organizations following the land reform debate, you would think that the majority of South Africans are actually for um, land reform. But in a um, report published by the Institute of Race Relations at the end of 2018, the Criterion Report, they actually said that two-thirds of South Africans are for private ownership of properties and that 90% of South Africans are actually against the concept of a government being able to take away private property. And when I did the interview with Feral Habaji about it, she said that this is the my timeline, your timeline dilemma, that you see your own timeline and you see the people you interact with 
and you see the people in interacting generally on social media and you believe that that's the majority of the South African population's opinion and that it's not necessarily so and that's why I think more research is needed on the power of um, algorithms and the power of data generated by users so that we can actually see and make some more concrete observations about this power relationship. And like I said, I'm a journalist, I can talk a lot about news, but if you have any questions about the mathematical side of it, you can um, contact my co-writer, Professor Turgo Celik. Thank you very much.